we started to plan for Brexit as soon as the vote happened. Someone risks their lives every day for this, so this, this is the important thing. There's impacts on everybody, you know, our staff and our customers. We have to think three years in front. So the first thing we realised was, one, we're going to have to sow and harvest more. And you can't just invent land. But what you can do is make the crop that you're growing more efficient. So we were then sort of right, which ones are going to give us the highest yield? Which are the crops that the chefs are going to want? The country's suddenly fallen in love with kale again. So kale is a classic, classic example that it was treated as like sort of, you know, the naughty veg before, but now I can't grow enough of it. The main issue that I have with Brexit is the added time on the supply chain. So anything coming from France is going to take two days longer. Now, when we're dealing with delicate produce, by the time that gets here now, it's past its peak. And in terms of going the other way, because some of my growers were exporting, since the 1st of January last year, we have not sent a single pallet to Ireland, which is astonishing, because we were sending through my farmers anything between 70 and 100 pallets a week. And that's something that hardly anyone is, it's registered hardly, it's registered for fish going to France that way. But because it's Northern Ireland, only recently, shall I say, it's got onto people's radar, but really about the fruit and veg that we were growing here for export, which we don't even call it export. It's Northern Ireland, it's not export, it's just going across, but it couldn't. So fortunately enough, we've been able to absorb from the farm those um, hundred pallets, but if we couldn't, that would be crop wasted. Today we've got herrings, we've got farm Scottish salmon, we've got wild Canadian salmon. Most of my stuff, as I said, comes from Devon, Cornwall, Scotland, so it is UK fish, really. There's only one or two things we don't sell from the UK. So it's, yeah, I mean, the more we sell from the UK, the better, really. At the end of the day, someone's got to go and get this stuff. Someone's got to fish for it. It's not something they just pick out on a shelf. Someone risks their lives every day. Tastes have changed massively. Well, years ago, we'd have sold mainly what we'd have called traditional fish, so your cod, haddock, place. People would now go abroad, taste different things, different cuisines. Things like squid was considered exotic, now it's part of everyday life. And monkfish, they used to sling back in the sea, now it's an expensive fish and people like it. And over a period of, say, 30, 40 years, it has changed massively. It's a little bit early to say so, isn't it? We're only four months ago. I think it'll take a year or two years before we see any any change to be truthful with you. Well, we supply over half a million customers around the world with British branded food and drink products. Predominantly British expats, but we also are seeing an increase in the amount of non-Brits. Brexit has massively affected our business. Uh, so we spent 12 months before we, uh, before we exited the EU preparing according to government guidelines and then we were seeing all types of issues with orders not getting through customs in different countries. And then as we got to the 1st of April, it became very apparent that this new legislation was going to be coming in, but we still weren't getting clarification. So we had to remove from sale all chocolate and any, any product that contained any animal origin. We weren't able to sell those into the EU anymore. So that would effectively, our range reduced from 6,000 products down to about 1,000 products that we were able to sell. When you're sending a parcel in that's got 80 different products, it's not cost effective to be able to put that documentation together. So anything we can do is ship into the EU in bulk, into a distribution centre and then fulfil from within the EU. That's what we've decided to do, but it was 40% of the business that we've lost uh, due, due to Brexit. Thank you.